how hard was it for you to make this documentary for the fifth estate? Well, actually, it, it wasn't that hard. Um, first of all, I've always wanted to talk about the Montreal Massacre, even when no one else wanted to talk about it. You know, I worked very hard to get, uh, after the, the actual event, to get my hands on the suicide note. And um, so I've always been interested in what happened that night, why it happened that night, and to whom. Um, but in terms of uh, the the tenth anniversary piece, the the documentary, actually, it was suggested to me by Jim Edward, who is Anne Marie Edward's uh, brother. So one of the victims' brother came to me, I remember, at the Fifth Estate at the CBC building, and said, "You know, it's the tenth anniversary coming up. Something w has got to be done." And you know, little had been done uh, all in in, all in those ten years. Um, I myself had done something for the National Magazine for the fifth anniversary, but it, all in all, I think it's something uh, that was really extremely painful, it still is, but still at the 10th anniversary, there hadn't been much done about it. So I thought, this is a good time. And how hard was it for you personally to do that documentary? Well, I, I'm, I am involved in, in the documentary because of my involvement with the, with the actual events. You know, my name was on the list, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to get my hands on the suicide note. I wanted to know, you know, what went through that man's head when he decided to kill women in, in my name, more or less, you know. Um, and um, uh, for me, it's, it's something that, you know, it, I can't, um, I can't, it's a part of my life, it's become a part of my life, you know, it did turn my life around to a certain extent, um, uh, you know, it did shatter many illusions <laughs> that I might have had until that point, so, you know, it's, it's not, I, I never felt in danger, however, so it, it's really not, I was never anywhere close on dying that night, you know, 14 other women died and 14 other people were injured. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I didn't feel unsafe by any means. Um, but I certainly was angry, first of all, that out of nowhere this young man had decided to kill women because they were women and, and, and because he hated f feminists. Um, uh, for me, that was a horrifying thing, and it had to be elucidated. Uh, as much as possible, uh, including if it meant I including myself or m my own my own experience in it, you know. And what would you say if, if it came down to a lesson that you would like people to take from this documentary? Well, I like many women um, at the time, uh, twenty five years ago, um, especially here in Montreal. I, it was extremely painful to see, after such a tragedy, that um, people didn't want to talk about it, that people wanted to, to check this one as one lunatic, a lone crazed gunman. Le Pen himself wrote in his suicide note, this is how I'm going to be portrayed, but I consider myself a rational erudite. But the, it, the, t the attempt to see him as, as you know, an exception to an otherwise peaceful and progressive society. So, it, it, you know, a, a crazy guy that had nothing to do with us and nothing to do with women and nothing to do with feminists um, was very, very big. So for me, the lesson of, uh, in, in trying to, d in doing this uh, documentary was showing that this man wasn't as crazy as he was put out to be. Uh, he was definitely a loner. He definitely had a chip on his shoulders, but he had a cause. As far as I'm concerned, Maclepin was our first terrorist. However, contrary to what we've just seen happen in Ottawa and saint jean sur richelieu we, we depoliticized Polytechnique to as much as possible. Um, and I wanted to repoliticize it, to put the p things back in its place, uh, uh, including what happened to other people. That, that's an another big part of the, the film. It wasn't just 14 women, which is bad enough, um, there were people, in fact, it turns out there are four, uh, 14 people in all today, as of uh, today, uh, from, from the, the moment that happened till today, 14 people took their own lives. 
uh, in the years following uh, because of this. It, I mean, somehow tied to this. Uh, so there, it created a tremendous trauma. Uh, and I think we needed to acknowledge it as a society. And that's what I wanted people <laughs> to take away. And do you think that the, the lesson in terms, of, in terms of that, in terms of the debate over uh, the relationship between men and women, and specifically violence against women, um, that that lesson is something that has been heard? Mm -hmm. Your documentary, of course, was on the 10th anniversary. Now we're the 25th anniversary. Is that less? Is that lesson being being learned? I yeah. Guess? Well, actually, this is the first anniversary, <laughs> and it's been 25 years uh, of anniversaries, where I think there's a bit of silver lining. You know, I remember after the event in 1989 or ni beginning in 1990, people, women, saying, "Now they're going to believe us. Now they're going to believe how women are under the gun." how we are subjected to violence, how, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> but people didn't believe, did not make the equation then, or even many years after, to a large extent, it was seen as too much of an extreme example. You know, there isn't a, a, a line you can draw between women being gunned down in a university campus and the kind of violence most women are subjected to. But today, thanks to, amongst other things, the Gian Gomeshi affair, thanks to the fact that women got death threats uh, because they're involved with video games, thanks to uh, young stars getting involved with feminism, Emma Watson and the United Nations, Beyonce uh, claiming herself. There's been a bunch of things that have forced people to connect the dots and to say that yes, women still are subject to violence. Uh, in, a, in a much more banal way than the Montreal Massacre, but in a, it's a much more widespread way. And in, in fact, that is the real problem. And so I think that actually, I haven't seen this kind of reaction in 30 f or 35 years. Uh, first of all, I haven't seen this kind of women taking, you know, taking, taking you know, to the microphone, if, if only on social media, saying, you know, me too, it's happened to me. But I haven't heard this kind of, of, of attention to what they're saying in a long time. So maybe, maybe something is happening here, though it ain't exactly clear. <laughs> uh, and w sort of to come back to that, to that answer, what would you say has changed or hasn't changed in terms of the issues of violence against women since this documentary was made? Let's go with the start with the <coughs> what has changed, do you think? You sort of talked about that. Well, I mean, women, you know, they're in Montreal anyway, uh, there are 20, the engineering students, female students now number 25%. It's, it's, it's not huge, but it's better than, it's, it is anywhere else in Canada, by the way, and it's better than it was 25 years ago. So for sure that we are inching forward. I mean, women uh, and more than inching forward, in fact. In terms of education, there's a real success story there. Women are more than half the university students in most disciplines. Um, uh, so there are things that are happening, but are, they're happening rather slowly. I think what we've just discovered with the Gomeshi affair, again, is that it's one thing to change the laws, you know, which we did years and years ago, uh, to assure that women have an equal uh, place it's another thing to change attitudes. Um, certainly, Maktepin was an, a reminder of that, but we got another reminder that it takes a hell of a long time. And the thing I've always said that I think there's been two major things uh, since, let's say, the end of the 80s that have kept women down. Violence, the kind of violence you never hear about or don't really care about, um, and hi the, the so-called hypersexualization of women, which uh, has gone out of all out of proportion, and I think is a way of keeping women in their places subtly because women, you know, participate in this. Um, so I think some things have changed, and other things still have to change. <laughs>